Today, for the next couple hours, we are going to do everything we can to dissect any issues you're having, try to hit some goals that you have. And um, we've had the opportunity, obviously, to, to work with you a little bit in the past. So I'm excited to see where this goes. But um, I guess, yeah, Kelsey, we'll start with you. If you just kind of want to summarize what, if any issues you're having and what your goals are for today, we'd love to um, see what we can do for you. Okay, so when I got him, he was clipped. Um, he's about a year and a half, and um, his wings came in maybe about a couple months ago. And um, so he flies. I can get him to do short recalls. Um, but the main thing I have is he, um, if he will do a long flight, he doesn't know how to land. So he'll just keep circling and then end up on the floor. And then if I go to try to catch him, he'll just like bump my hand and keep going. What I just went over, you'll be able to see what's maybe what she's doing right. Maybe there's something she could clean up and you'll be able to, to see some of that. So no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> So perfect example there. Every interaction is a training session. Might be nervous, turned into a trick. You're going to go here, you get a click, you get a treat. Okay. It's yeah. a good way to work through any fears versus some people would say, oh, he's afraid of that, grab my other one. And all we're doing in that case is reinforcing that it's okay to be terrified of something that's not actually a danger. Versus working through it. So that was a great example. Yeah, that was great, Kelsey. We were right. ready to work through it even though. You didn't have to. <laughs> I'm a slow eater. <laughs> there we go. Good time. Nice. Would it be possible maybe switch positions so we can kind of see over here too? Like sure. What's the interaction oh. that's going on? I just realized your hair matches its head color like perfectly. <laughs> so this is tricky when they're still eating. Mm -hmm. So don't don't feel like we're rushing you at all. Yeah. I know the pressure of the class could sometimes. Right here. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, that was a Great score. <laughs> <laughs> so what distance would you say you, um, you have the biggest struggles when he'll miss you? Um, it's really if I'm like any further than this. Okay. Or if I try to put him on something where he's not sure. Right here. Maybe see. He's just gonna put a ceiling. He, um, if like he's sitting on one of the perches and then he hears one of the dogs bark upstairs and he freaks out and he does like a panic flight and then you come in. And then typically if he like, he doesn't know exactly where he's going, he'll just do a circle and then crash land on the floor. Okay. And then I typically always make him at least walk to me because when he was clipped, that's what I did. I would be able to call him pretty much across the house if he would walk to me. Cool, okay, so a really interesting concept that I've seen specifically with, with flight is as humans, we have a tendency to focus on skills, mm -hmm. but for the bird's sake, we have to focus first on building confidence and the skills will follow. So what that looks like in practicality is getting a lot of really short flights mm -hmm. and then ever so gradually increasing that where we see people struggle is that they're having success with let's say 20 foot flights and then they go around the corner and that first round the corner they think that the bird has the skills to do it they're pushing the skills mm -hmm. and the bird crashes well now we regress to shorter than 20 foot flights and the bird goes backwards so it's really important to just build those skills especially since he was clipped and had has probably fears surrounding falling as a clipped bird. Mm -hmm. It'll be really important to just continually build those short flights until until he's almost to the point where he's bored with them and chooses to make slightly longer flights. Mm -hmm. um, we, When we're outside, we'll do intentional short A to Bs until the bird's like, okay, I'm gonna go do an exploratory. Mm -hmm. And that tells us the bird's ready to do it when they do it intentionally where it's a disaster outside is where somebody does a short flight a little longer and then too long, the bird has more speed than normal and now does an exploratory flight, but not on purpose. It's just out of the fact that it couldn't, it's never gone that fast. It doesn't want to slow down that speed. And then that's where people get into their first um, <clears throat> recovery. Using all those things to apply to indoor, from what I'm seeing, it'll be really important for you to just get these 
consistent short flights and just play within the range that he's confident okay. and and train right at the edge of that confidence so that we can continue to build that confidence and those skills will follow. He almost seems like he's flying out of... There's an anxious. Yeah. Sure. He's in the back of that blue thing. <laughs> yeah. I almost wonder about um, his flights looked better on this side, but maybe it was because it was just the beginning. But he's spooked about something. Yeah, so let's... If he's not I guess he does have his back to a lot of scary. I was going to yeah, say, I kind let's of feel try like moving the perch over to that corner mm -hmm. by the refrigerator. <laughs> it definitely seems like you're dealing with a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. He's never really been out in a new place like this. Um, typically, we just stay at the house, and I bring him... Um, I'll take him outside in like the travel cage, but he doesn't really, this is the first time I've traveled with him other than to go to the vet. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, he's doing awesome then under those circumstances. Ragnar, what are you thinking? <laughs> he seemed kind of nervous. I, I was wondering if he would, if he would go to you, because I've never had anyone who like n understands animals go to him because, um, my mom will watch him and, or my brother, um, and they just put food in the cage and they're not, he doesn't really have any other people who. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to try. There's a couple of different ways we could approach this. We could have you, you hold him and lure him onto me, mm -hmm. which is probably better. This is actually a great example. You notice with Rocco, when he was on his cage, it took four hands to get what we wanted. So I think in this case, we could, if you put him onto me, that's an option, or I could potentially try to have him step up. What do you think the most likelihood for success would be? Um, when I try to put him on other people, he, um, even with the lure, he's like, no, and he'll fly off. Okay. So um, let's put, let's try first having you in a position that if he's going to fly off, he can fly to you safely. Mm -hmm. So based on where he is right now, I'd say possibly you stand up right behind his cage. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, no, I'm going to change that. Let's, let's bring the perch here. Do a wave. What's your wave cue? Just, yeah. Can you wave? No? You want to step up? Do. Cool, problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then it's my mom who does. <laughs> You're going to need to get Sorry, rid of your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and could, there's more treats on the ground than in your crop. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Do we want to try getting more flights out of him today, or what are your thoughts? I'd like to. He doesn't seem quite... I think we might want to try going this way instead of that way. Okay. Okay, so yeah, just do whatever distance you feel like he can confidently do. And I do find if he's like... If he's more comfortable, he's not going to fly to me. Like, oh, okay. if I have like a big tree stand, he'll sit there all day and he will not fly to me from that. Okay. This is Comet's life in one sentence. Nice. When I first started flight training him, I would use Whoa. Ragnar. Call again. Ragnar. See, is this thing? Yeah. <laughs> Two points. Uh, He's looked on the counter. Kind of adorable. So I usually don't go and save him. I'll at least lift him out because mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's going to make a flight otherwise. You come? Can you reset him on the perch, Jamie? You want me to reset him? Yeah. Okay. So you can see the distance now where he's not mm -hmm. capable. And that's a, that's a muscle conditioning. Um, scenario. Ragnar. Nice. Yeah. Right now with him, we're just wanting him to fly to her. So we have a higher, a higher level of acceptance. If it's not perfect, it's okay. So I was trying to explain earlier, like, we're, we're clicking irregardless of it being perfect. Okay. What did you say? Said so we were going to sacrifice Jamie next. <laughs> Before that. So we're, we're, we have direction on what to do for free, for free flight, for indoor flight. 
Um, and we have enough data to try to give her advice to move forward. But right now, since socialization is one of these factors she wants to work on, we are going to have you jump in next and just get a step up and see how it looks. Okay. Done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <Stop> let's. <laughs> You guys match today. Uh, we're working on having this bird step up for multiple people, so she just did it for me and dad and your next. Yeah, can you use the treat and just ask her to step up? She's super nice. We could also try from Kelsey since that worked for me. Yeah. Do you guys want to try holding them too? Sure. Are you open to it? Yeah. He likes women. It's interesting seeing the difference between. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Isaac. Come on. He's still eating. Isaac here. <laughs> Come on, Isaac. Okay, now. <laughs> How do you know my name? <laughs> wow. Flying to guy. Cool. Awesome. It's like, Mom. <laughs> and I eventually when I buy a house I want to buy a bigger bird that I eventually want to free fly but yeah. I don't know if it makes sense or not but getting like I got these guys as pets and getting a bird with the intention to free fly I don't know if that makes sense it makes a difference, all the difference yeah Bondi is the one that we're like the most mm -hmm. per, uh, just cautious with because we got her as a pet and all the others we got for free flight knowing the risks when we got into it yeah and because of that, we're more accepting of the outcome and the birds end up having more fun because we're giving them yeah. more freedom. So you think he'll do that or do you think that's a little too far? Uh, I'm not sure. Bragger. So if he doesn't do it here, I would accept a fail for a mm -hmm. moment. So he doesn't think he can just keep luring you into an easy flight. Nice. <laughs> Probably end on that. Yeah, I'd stop there for a bit. Yeah, so I think with you, you know, looking at the at the socialization and handling, mm -hmm. it's there. It yeah. just I think comes down to your environment and being selective on when and where you're set up for success just like for them but being set up for success with with anybody that you want to handle them um, especially if there's a history there mm -hmm. right so a, a great example would be a macaw that likes to shoulder rush their owner isn't going to shoulder rush me because i just will never set that precedence from the beginning right and so i will do my training intentionally of like a step up and immediately show the treat back where i want the bird to go down Mosquito or what's that? <laughs> it's a, it looks Tourette's. like nothing on the videos. I don't know. <laughs> you look like a psycho. Working around the history that might be there, like you said with your mom, you know, she doesn't like, or he doesn't like to go to your mom. You'll want to show your mom what you want it to look like, mm -hmm. and then say, "Here's the things that I want to be sure we don't do." Yeah. And it's really for whatever reason the human mind needs to see what it looks like and what it doesn't look like to then be able to do it properly. Because I could show somebody all day long only how to do it, but unless they also see what it shouldn't look like, they'll probably make that mistake. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a helpful tip for that. And then just being in the environment where you're set up for success. And then yeah, just to, to kind of reiterate with the flight training stuff, just I saw it here, the natural instinct for you to try to to push and go further on flights. 
I would encourage you to stop looking at the success of flight with how far you can get them to fly. Okay. Think of it as how many, how many sets of five perfect flights can you get? Can you get seven days in a row? Awesome. Do that. It's not about the increase in the distance yet. It's about getting perfect repetitions. And for him right now, it's at like three feet. Yeah. And you see him self-regulate. When you went a little too far, he's like, mm, I'm not doing that. So just change your measurement of success on that because those skills will develop. You know, he hasn't had these wings the whole time. He started clipped. And, and unfortunately... I think with species that need so much speed to maintain flight, it's a little bit more difficult for them to relearn to fly properly, but it's gonna come through those, more of those perfect short sessions. Huge snakes, oh yeah, huge snakes. It's okay. <laughs> huge snakes. <laughs> Try again. Huge thanks to Snake Discovery for hosting our masterclass this weekend.